Just want to document the inside of this uh, CT52 oscilloscope before I try and repair it. It does actually work, um, but it obviously needs some help with new capacitors and things inside, and I want to check all the resistors as well. Now this is a British military scope made by Metrovic up in Manchester, I think they were, um, in about 1952. It's fully ruggedized, you know, it's built for young men um, who've never seen anything like this before. It's a solid piece of gear, and not only do I want to document it, but I want to show you what a miracle of miniaturization this was. Um, it is all valve, um, it's got a dinky little screen inside it, it's not a big thing, um, and it was used for radio and radar work. Um, it's got a pull down stand here that lifts it up to some height, I'll do it in one hand because I'll tip it over. Um, but yeah, I've got the power plug with it. Lengthwise, it's tiny. Um, can we show you? This is uh, something. There's a pencil. It's not very big at all. About 15 inches long, I guess. Something like that. But um, I'll take the covers off and we'll have a look inside. Now, the covers come off by releasing these two screws here. Little knurled nuts. And this bit just pulls off. There we go. And you can see the power supply in the back. I'll just put the camera down and uh, we'll get this cover off, which just slides off. Right, here we are. This is the rear cover. I just want to show you it's actually like a thick die cast piece of metal. No sheet here. This is proper military ruggedized stuff. Uh, there's the front and it's the same here, this is a great big die cast panel. You can see the delay line on the top. That's these coils and the associated capacitors on top. Some valves there. Capacitors, and that's the input, and that's a Plessy Mark IV input. And there's the great big smoothing uh, filter capacitors on the back of one and on the other side and a great big oil filled transformer and actually you see these there's some screws here and one just underneath sorry one just there um, and two the other side and if you undo those it, you can just pull the power pack straight off now this is the AC version there was a DC version and you could just switch the uh, DC power supply straight in, as I say, using these screws. There's a few electrolytics I'll need to change. It's a shame to um, touch it at all, but I sort of need it to um, use on a couple of wobulators I've got in the back of the car. And all these sort of brown carbon comp resistors will need to be checked and possibly changed. It's got a big metal stack rectifier along here. You can see the tube, look, the tube <laughs> ends there, it's what, five, six inches long. Let's switch it round and look at the other side. Double diode in that glass envelope. You can see the MOD mod stamps. No leaky capacitors, but uh, it sure isn't running right. The trace flicks up and down of its own accord and is not all the way across the screen. Let's have a look on the underside. You've got two centre cell EHT rectifiers there. And you've got these paper caps. Sorry, paper and oil caps in metal tins. You see there's four there. I probably couldn't replace those even if I wanted to, really. 
but um, as a work of engineering and trying to stuff all these valves in a tube inside a portable oscilloscope from in 1952 I just think this is wonderful you see there's the other big electrolytic 550 volt surge hopefully they're alright and these were made in November 1952, both of them. And I don't think this has ever been touched. I just say it's a, a shame to take all these old parts out, but I do need to use this. As a scope, it's fairly simple to use. Um, obviously, there's your um, CRT. You've got your trace shift up and down and from side to side there. Time base fine adjustment, your amplifier gain, brilliance and focus. Obviously, all scopes have got those. Your sync um, in conjunction with time base fine buttons will um, hold your trace on the screen and stop it free running. Um, course time base off and one position six is off. And then you've got different settings to speed up your time base. Um, let's, let's actually get it up on its stand a bit. All right. So here you've got single sweeps and you've got free running. You've got your wire play. It's, it's all much the same as a modern scope would have. It's just a little bit different, you know. And you've got all your inputs, and you've got a calibrator input there, sync inputs. Um, that's your main input, your Y input, and your earth, obviously, and your ground. That's your X out, and that'll carry about 200 volts, I believe, on it, I think. And um, I haven't really gone through all these um, settings yet. Let me just see, there's the part of AP68622 so that's probably the box and uh, something else but it's in pretty good condition I'm actually missing um, there's a little knurled uh, ring that goes around here with the graticule and it's missing that so I don't really need it I want to check out you know at the band pass of IF so I don't really need it but um, I might make something up um, I just need a bit of perspex and scratch some one centimeter uh, divisions on it um, and try and get something so I can hold it onto the screen there but it's not really necessary at the moment hopefully one turn up one one day but I just thought you'd like to have a look at this it's the multiple voltage tap sort of plug box at the back and the fuses on off switch that mains transformer most of the weight is here in that mains transformer it's a thing of beauty so um, this is going to be my next project now I'm going to change a few caps and uh, stop as I go you know I don't have to put it all back together before I turn it on I can almost replace a capacitor at a time and see how the improvement goes um, and by taking the CRT out, um, and you can see there's a hinge here. Um, once I take the CRT out and undo a couple of screws on the front, I can drop the front panel um, and service all these pots. And check all there's quite a few resistors and capacitors behind here. So um, I shall do that. I'll be very careful with that CRT. But the first thing I think is getting the power supply up to snuff and uh, that should be the easiest bit. These capacitors um, I read seem, I read seem to hold out quite well actually so uh, I'll check them out anyway but I suggest it's these things that have gone a bit leaky and horrible over the years. And now it's 60 years old. Right, I'm going to plug it in, turn the lights out and let you see a trace on it. Right, here we are, everything's back together. I've plugged the 
Plessy Mark IV laid back in. And I've got a bit of wire connected it up. It's got an AC calibrator here, putting out wire, putting out um, a voltage, um, a sine wave into the Y plate. So uh, I'll turn the light out because you can't see anything otherwise, and we'll have a look at the screen. I've just got to turn the brilliance up. There we go. So it does actually work, as you can see. The rotation's a bit off, and I think it's got some screen burn on it, but not a big issue. Focus isn't great, actually, just here. There we go, that's better. There. So, we do have a, we do have a working time base. You know, it all, it all works, it's just, um, you know, <laughs> the, the sweep doesn't go to the full range of the screen and things like that, so, and it keeps moving up and down every now and again. If I disconnect this, you might see what I mean. See that, see it gets wider as you increase the time base. So there is a little bit of work to do, but at least it works. It's just not very in calibration, is it? So there we go. I'll switch it off. I might look out for another tube actually because I really like the engineering on this. It's an absolute wonder of engineering. But anyway, that's the uh, oscilloscope CT52, which I'll be using in conjunction with a wobulator, hopefully, once I've learnt how to use the thing. Right, thanks for watching.